And they always start with fairly simple formations and then they get bigger as the season gets, goes on. So we're, we have just begun a crop circle season. If you go to cropcircleconnector.com and select at the top of the left column, latest circles, then you can see what's happening. You can see people's ideas, you know, comments about every, uh, you know, a, a whole series of photographs. Sometimes you'll see close-up photographs from the ground, comments, articles. What are people thinking about this one? So Crop Circle Connector is the place to go if you want to be up to date about what's happening in 2017. But if you want to see past, past formations, and I can't possibly show them all to you, of course, in this time, either go to Lucy Pringle's website, she has galleries of photos, or you can go to Steve Alexander's website, Temporary Temples. Temporary Temples. Because after all, these are temporary. These are plants that are going to die at the end of the year if they're not harvested, because they're, they're annuals, right? All those plants, you know, wheat, corn, those plants die. Um, so that's why they're temporary. The next year, it's a clean slate, isn't it? And, and farmers grow their crops again. Do you have a list of resources for that? Or maybe I'll write them down. If you go to my website, johnroot.net, and select Majesty and Mystery Crop Circles, and then select the handout, you, you can download it that way. So are, the new, are these happening in England, or are they happening in England? They do happen all over the world. But England is always, southern England is always the epicenter. It's always the best place in the world many more than elsewhere. They're bigger in, in, in general. They're bigger, they're more elaborate. Okay, many people experience dramatic life changes after going into a crop circle, rather like those who have a near-death experience. I've read many books about near-death experiences. It's a fascinating topic to me, and I think there's a lot to be learned from people who have experienced, who have actually been on the other side, which I believe is the case. It's, it's almost like they're tourists who are coming back to, to tell us this is what you, what you will experience when you pass to the next side. And, and uh, near-death experiencers are never afraid of death after they've had their experience. They know with certainty that it's a, it's a place of ineffable beauty and love. That's, that's our, uh, what we have to look forward to, right? Um, so, but these crop circle experiences are being compared to, you know, you feel like you're in your own little world it's almost womb-like, totally secure. You may be limited physically, but not mentally, emotionally, or spiritually. You can access other levels of consciousness. And some people even report that they can heal others just from having been inside a crop circle. I have not. <laughs> I, I haven't had the opportunity yet. So something happened to this, formation, this uh, slide. I'm not sure why there aren't. It should be filled. You know, in July 1999, there were, there were at least 16. Um, that's one of them. A beam of light was filmed prior to the crop circle at that site. This is interesting, isn't it? These, it looks like there are cubes here that are suggested by the lines. Chinese yeah, Chinese deckers, right, yeah. Yeah, honeycomb, yeah. Here's Silbury Hill again with another beautiful formation right across from Silbury Hill. Oh, I wish I had that slide because this shows uh, the formation from above. Here is the close-up of the magic basket. These plants are still standing in the, ri the ring, right? These plants are standing, but none of the rest. These are swirled here. These are laid out in, in almost like a checkerboard pattern. It reminds me a little bit of a pie with a, you know, the, right? <laughs> but, and that's why it's called the magic basket, because again, you know, the way that the, the, weave, the weaving effect, highly, highly complex. And again, doesn't this look in some ways like a basket with the plants here in the very, cir very center, they're swirled. Here they're going out you know, pointing outwards. Here they're swirled again. Very controlled.
I want you to appreciate the humor of this one, where you have six five-pointed stars, and this one is a little bit different, isn't it? That it's just floating off into space. Hey, get back here. You belong. <laughs> Your place is right here where the rest of us are. What are you doing over there? <laughs> and there's a similar humor about the asymmetry of this one. All these are supposed to be, well, maybe they're flames, right? They, look, they remind you of flames. But what's this one doing hiding inside here? It belongs out there with the rest of them, doesn't it? And I have no idea what created this effect the way the plants are laid down. Do you remember in uh, science class where you could put the filings, iron filings on top of a piece of paper and have the magnet underneath the piece of paper and how the, the filings will arrange into this pattern, a pattern of interference. Mm -hmm. Okay. This one was called the angel. And how can it be that a poppy, and there were several of these poppies, red poppies, standing proud and tall with all of the crop surrounding them down? Well, the crop had been laid flat, had, bent, had been bent by the crop circle making energy. So suddenly, in the middle of the night, all these, these crops are, go, are pushed to the ground, they're bent, but the poppy's totally unaffected. Totally unaffected. So it must be some, it, it clearly can't be mechanically flattened because the poppies would be flattened too, right? Wow. Words fail me. So what feeling do you have when you see something like this? A feeling of awe? A feeling of that there's so you're looking at something sacred, aren't you? Isn't that sacred? I mean, to even conceive of a design like that, is, is such an inspiration, even to conceive of it. Now, in 1974, this message was sent out, beamed out from this uh, telescope, or, or this, this center, I uh, forget what it's called, uh, the, the, an, an, the transmitting antenna dish, radio telescope in Arecibo. Tell, with all of this information, all, all of it encoded in a, a binary code, and with the hopes that some, that perhaps thousands of years later, because it takes a long, long time for radio signals to get out far, far out into space, perhaps there'd be an answer. Well, it didn't take thousands of years, it just took a couple of decades. Here is Chill Bolton Observatory in England. Chill Bolton Observatory. There is a face right there, and there is their response. And what they said was, uh, this is who we are, right? This is a representation of a human. This is who we are. We're, we're smaller, but there are many more of us than there are of you. And our chemistry, remember this is all about chemistry. Our chemistry, instead of being organic chemistry, you might be aware, is all, all about the carbon atom. Organic chemistry is all about carbon. Carbon is surrounded by all, a lot of other atoms. And they're saying, our chemistry, our organic chemistry, is based on silicon. Very different, right? And this is what our genes look like, or, or you know, that compared to this double helix, theirs is somewhat different. How did they interpret all that? They were using this, they, they interpreted using the same code 
that was used to make this one because it's, it's known how this, you know, how this was represented. And I think I'll end here because I've run out of time and I, or I could just, you know, keep on going and show you all the many other slides that I have. And it gives you the idea of just how they keep coming and they're so inspiring and they're so incredible and there's so, so much variety, right? And sometimes uh, uh, you have to wonder, right? Look at this. <laughs> Are we being blessed here? Do you have any connection with UFOs? That's a good question, a reasonable question. And I don't think that anyone can say conclusively that it's coming from a UFO, but it certainly is highly likely, it seems to me, that an intelligence and technology that is otherworldly, beyond what humans can do, right, um, is involved. I really don't think that a team of humans can be responsible for everything that we're seeing. And so wouldn't it be logical to assume, right, that this is in fact a gift from elsewhere? And how many people have seen UFOs, right? Marine light wheels, do a, do a search for marine light wheels. They're, they're another whole, you know, moving wheels of light, almost like um, fireworks in the water, if you will. You know, highly controlled bands of, of moving light. So, <laughs> you can see there are a lot of slides in this presentation. It's hard for me to stop when I make these. No more war was encoded in Morse code in, uh, in the field, the 70th anniversary of D-Day. And my, my uncle was shot out of the sky on D-Day. This is a very significant message to me. This is the, the, do you see how, here is the Morse code for the letter N, N, Morse code for O, three dashes, Morse code for, and so that's no, the first word, next word, M-O-R-E, next word, W-A-R. It's very clearly spelled out in English in Morse code. No more war. So don't you have this sense that we are being uh, gifted, right? Gifted with these formations that speak to us. This is a universal symbol, the heart. I want to point out that all these random circles at the, on, outside of the ring occur only on the right side of the heart. Draw an imaginary line right through the heart and you'll see there they are, right? But on the left side, they are not there at all. What does that mean? Something about our being, you know, being of right mind, being of right heart? <laughs> Are we, could it have to do with the left and right hemispheres of the brain? I don't know. All these things are mysteries and everyone is being invited to understand them according to what their frame of reference is. But I think all of us are being invited to be humble, you know, have, you know uh, think that we're not the uh, ultimate, <laughs> right? I mean, we're a very young species after all, right? So there must be intelligence beyond us. They don't want anything to do with us because we're so wrong. Ah, but, but, they, but there is a lot of variety in this human species. Here we are, and none of us would want to say we're warlike. We're, we're paying attention to this. And don't you think that they have enough faith in us and love us enough and care us about us enough to be gifting us with these. And they have enough hope and confidence that this message is going to be heeded, that they keep giving them to us. They haven't given up on us. They've got their work out with Trump. They haven't given up on us, okay? They haven't given up on us. They seem to know so much. Did I see Da Vinci's? Uh, yes, man? you did see Da Vinci's, yeah. That was in, in Netherlands, that huge, absolutely, you know, astoundingly large symbol of, of the man with the two, you know, two hand positions, just like Leonardo da Vinci, but, but the, it was made into a butterfly man. Yeah, that was from the Netherlands, yeah. Well, thanks for joining me. And, uh, <laughs> yeah.